scared. Where's no babe? On the American scale of suburban dog walker to back alley mugger, Asian people usually clock in around an all-you-can-eat buffet or piano prodigy if we're lucky. Depends on who you ask, I guess. Depends on whose eyes are calibrating this body between busboy and triad. What I'm trying to say is race is the first thing people usually notice about me. On a scale of effeminate to masculine, or depending on the eyes, flaming to straight, I usually clock in around a neutral to who the fuck cares, depending on the night, I guess. Depending on what I order at the bar, what song can drag a shimmy from my rusty chest like a fish hook. In downtown Minneapolis, when the word faggot whizzes past my cheek like a poorly aimed cum shot, I do not yell. I do not snap. I do not send a stampede of sharpened teeth to rearrange his eyebrows, because I know he wasn't talking to me. <laughs> when the man outside my apartment pinged me to the sidewalk like a moth between the glass, I was impressed that race had nothing to do with it. Even though he hated me, even though he spit in my face, even though he called me a faggot, I was thankful he could tell. Forgive me. I do consider myself lucky enough to still have a body. I am lucky enough to have an appearance that is easier to digest. Going southbound on I-35, we end up at a truck stop. It is 4 a.m. In, in the middle of nowhere, let's say Nebraska or Iowa or somewhere where the brown boy becomes aware of all the exit signs and I know I shouldn't judge a bullet by its casing, but I've read all the articles, seen this movie too many times to not predict the ending, but I am lucky. I am here with a car full of white friends. My friend Spencer twirls in the middle of the gas station like some Main Street marquee. Most people just assume he is gay without even asking. He wears his cliché like a proud mother or a bullseye. The guns, they don't even notice me. My skin is no longer the meal they are hungry for. No need for, no need to be splayed and stuffed. No need for brown boy to become a welcome mat. Another ghost haunting the trigger finger. They want to hang your head proud above their mantles of shimmy. Those bullets out of your chest kit. You, a beautiful throw rug. You, a martyr by default. You, the bravest fish in the barrel. And I know how it sounds to feel guilty about your safety, about not being more flammable, to consider your body a hiding spot, to watch your blood spill from someone else. But when I hear a man cough the word faggot like a possessed shotgun, I do not flinch. I do not fix my posture. I am not scared. I know he wasn't talking to me. Wow.